Good morning and welcome to day number nine of Crumbs from God's Word. Uh, today we will be looking at Genesis chapter 20, uh, Genesis chapter 21, and Genesis chapter 22. Then we will go over to Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 29, Psalm chapter 9, 1 through 12, and we close out in Proverbs chapter 2, verses 16 and 22. Jumping into Genesis, starting in chapter 21, uh, we're looking at verse number two, it says, For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. There is a law of fulfilled promises of God in this verse. First of all, Sarah is old and has a child. Uh, second, Abraham has a son from Sarah. Uh, third, in the old age. Four, at the set time. And five, the, that God had spoken. Uh, so there's so many promises in this little verse that it gives us assurance that God keeps his word. It may not be our time. We may not know his timing. I guarantee you, we don't know his timing. We don't know what God's up to sometimes. But we must trust God. Remember, Sarah laughed at God. We must trust God. Remember, Abraham said, yeah, you're probably right, Sarah. I should have a child with somebody else. Remember, God's word is true, and every man a liar. Look at verse 13. It says, and also the son of the bondwoman, uh, that's Ishmael, will I make a nation because he is thy seed. This is God saying, I promised your seed to be fruitful, and it will be. And that's a very uh, great encouragement to me. Verse 16, it says, and she, that's uh, Hagar, the handmaid, uh, went and sat down uh, over against him a good way off, and uh, uh, as it were a bow shot, for she said, let me not see the death of the child, and she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept, and uh, this is this is a prayer of uh, Hagar, I believe, and uh, the fact that she's uh, She's basically uh, in a desert with no water, uh, leaning against uh, a, a tree over the shrubs, uh, trying to find comfort, but knowing that they're going to die. Uh, this is a desperate time for her, and she's praying, and she's weeping, and look at the next verse, verse 17. And God heard the voice. Uh, friends, God hears the voice of our prayers especially when we're weeping. Now, that's a great study to go through scripture and find all the times that, that God answers prayer from weeping. And friends, there's times in our life uh, that we just need to weep before the Lord. In verse 21, and he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. I've mentioned before that Ishmael becomes the father of the... Uh, Muslim people, and I find it interesting that uh, um, I mentioned before that uh, Egypt is a picture of sin and of the world, and how uh, th this son Ishmael took a wife out of the land of Egypt, and uh, we see how that worked out for him. The Muslim people are as far away from God as can be in truth. And, uh, you know, it's very possible that that uh, happened uh, when he took a wife out of the land of Egypt. Uh, so there's something to consider there um, as we look at that. Uh, continuing on, uh, let's go over to chapter 22. And this is my favorite chapter, uh, probably in the whole entire word of God. And this is crumbs from God's word. So I might do a special uh, podcast just on this chapter, but I did pull out just a few things. Verse number one, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. That's testing Abraham. God tests us. It's important to know that God tests our faith. And he said unto him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I, I, here I am. Uh, the, the best circumstances of the Christian life is to be able to hear the voice of God and to respond, here I am. Now think about Jonah. Jonah said, no, I'm going somewhere else. 
and he ended up in the belly of a whale. And of course, we'll get there in a few months. Look at verse number six. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and the lad and uh, or laid it upon the Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. So uh, Abraham is told to sacrifice and make an altar, and they are gathering the materials in order to serve God correctly. Uh, sometimes in life, we have to gather materials. We have to gather resources. We find that in the life of David. We have to gather uh, maybe education or maybe experience or maybe uh, working alongside somebody in a ministry until we are strong enough to do it ourselves. Uh, but as God gives us uh, desires to serve him more, and uh, I think building an altar would be a great desire to serve him, uh, we need to gather resources to do that. Verse number 13, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a uh, ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering instead of his son. And uh, uh, Abraham calls the place Jehovah Jireh, that is to say, uh, in the mount, the Lord is shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh is God will provide. And this is a picture of Jesus coming to be our sacrifice. And uh, I, I need to move on because I will get stuck. I love this chapter. And when I uh, help others learn how to preach and how to dissect God's word, we always go to that chapter because it is so full. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, this is the day of rapture. This is the day of the Lord's coming back. And uh, oftentimes in scripture, you see that phrase in that day. And in that day refers to um, either the rapture itself or after the rapture or our time in heaven or things of that nature. And many in that day will say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. My goodness, friends. What an incredible uh, statement to read from the Lord and to uh, really dissect and understand. Um, look at verse 15. It says, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, and inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Uh, as we get around God's people, we need to look for uh, the fruit that they have. And if their fruit does not match the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, we need to start questioning. Maybe they're not really of God. And this is what's happening here. And uh, we need to be very careful to examine those that we put into our life. There are... Uh, a law of false prophets, especially on the internet today, that we have access to. But uh, many, uh, and I, I don't want to name names, but I'm thinking of many. Um, but at some point, I might may, make names. But uh, if, they're, if they twist scripture or use scripture in a way that works for them, and uh, just be very careful. Uh, they may be a wolf in sheep's clothing. And uh, so... Uh, we don't want to uh, be around things like that. Again, God's word be true. Every man a liar. Psalm chapter 9, verse 1, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. And uh, I will show forth all thy marvelous works. What an amazing, amazing thing to think about how we can praise the Lord with our whole heart. Verse number 10. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not to cry, or forgetteth not the cry of the humble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. Uh, friends, as a Christian, our job is to tell others about Christ, to give the name of Christ, the gospel, to others so that they may put their trust in thee. And then verse 11, sing praises to the Lord. Uh, singing should be a part of our life, uh, not just in church, not just with other fellow believers, 
but singing uh, songs of praise, singing hymns, singing things of this nature that bring honor and glory to God and not to the artist and not to the music, but the focus is on God. And we must have the right music to have the right worship. Verse number 20 of Proverbs chapter 2 it says that thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. This is a reminder to stay away from strange women, uh, but it's it's even more than that, just to have a pure, clean, righteous life before God. Uh, thank you for joining me today on Crumbs from God's Word. I look forward to the next one uh, tomorrow. <laughs>